Prince Charles declares war. The consolidation of global power begins now. Before I get into the details, if you're new to the Next News Network, hit the red button down below to subscribe and tap that notification bell. When you do, we don't want you to miss an important report. So can the British royal family even legally declare war anymore? Apparently the answer is yes, if it's an invisible enemy like global warming. Prince Charles, he came out of his life of luxury to hobnob with the other wealthy global elites to consolidate global fascism and declare war this week, a move some may consider the behavior of the Antichrist. Tim Haynes from Real Clear Politics reports that speaking Monday at the United Nations Climate Summit in Scotland, Charles, the Prince of Wales, said that global leaders need a vast military-style campaign to, quote, marshal the strength of the global private sector for global fundamental economic transition. Note that a military-style campaign requires top-down authoritarian approach. Watch. So, ladies and gentlemen, my plea today is for countries to come together to create the environment that enables every sector of industry to take the action required. We know this will take trillions, not billions of dollars. We also know that countries, many of whom are burdened by growing levels of debt, simply cannot afford to go green. Here we need a vast military-style campaign to marshal the strength of the global private sector. With trillions at its disposal, far beyond global GDP, and with the greatest respect, beyond even the governments of the world's leaders, it offers the only real prospect of achieving fundamental economic transition. We have to put ourselves on what might be called a warlike footing, he said. Louder with Crowder had some fun with the serious declaration by the prince, writing that we're told that there's no such thing as a great reset or a new world order even as those words literally come out of the mouths of world leaders. To the global elite, let me offer a bit of advice. When addressing a meeting of global leaders discussing global changes, don't let Prince Charles say crazy things like this out loud. What's not crazy is what he said in February of 2011 at the Low Carbon Prosperity Summit held before the European Parliament. Then the prince was lamenting on the impact of those who would deny the existence of climate change while slowing their agenda and accuse them of secretly conspiring to undermine and deliberately destroy the entire market-based capitalist system. Watch. Now, I have to say this um, process has not exactly been helped by the corrosive effect on public opinion of those climate change skeptics who deny the vast body of scientific evidence that shows, beyond any reasonable doubt, that global warming has been exacerbated by human industrialized activity. Their suggestion that hundreds of scientists around the world and those who accept their dispassionate evidence, including presumably, ladies and gentlemen, myself, who uh, rather ironically am constantly accused of being anti-science, are somehow unconsciously biased, creates the implication that many of us are somehow secretly conspiring to undermine and deliberately destroy the entire market-based capitalist system which now dominates the world. Now this matters because he's now advocating the consolidation of the private sector using a vast military style campaign. Watch again. Here we need a vast military-style campaign to marshal the strength of the global private sector. Consolidation of the private sector using a top-down vast military-style campaign is communism, and it is exactly what he claims that he is being accused of, conspiring to deliberately destroy the entire market-based capitalist system. Watch again. Their suggestion that hundreds of scientists around the world and those who accept their dispassionate evidence, including presumably, ladies and gentlemen, myself, who uh, rather ironically am constantly accused of being anti-science, are somehow unconsciously biased, creates the implication that many of us are somehow 
secretly conspiring to undermine and deliberately destroy the entire market-based capitalist system which now dominates the world. So again, why does this matter? Well, an author by the name of Tim Cohen, he wrote a book in 1998 revealing in great detail the level of authority that Prince Charles of Wales has over global leadership going so far as to draw a direct line to biblical scripture, painting him as the Antichrist from the book of Revelation. Now bear with me here. The book is titled The Antichrist and a Cup of Tea. Now, using the global threat of climate change, the prince is urging world leaders to take aggressive military-style action, fusing public-private partnerships into global fascism. So how could he do this? Does he really have the influence? Is he consolidating power now? Well, according to Cohen's book, in a slideshow that Cohen produced around the same time, Cohen claims that Charles certainly has vast influence over the world's private corporations. Watch. Prince Charles steers the environmental ethics and business agendas of the world's most powerful multinational corporations. In the 1970s, the prince began to create an organization known today as the Prince of Wales Business Leaders Forum, the PWBLF. That forum is comprised of the senior executives, presidents, and vice presidents of the world's largest multinational corporations, in fact, over 100 of the world's largest multinational corporations. The top 200 multinational corporations control over 28% of the world's entire economic output. That makes Prince Charles perhaps the most influential man in the world among multinational corporations which again control much of the world's economic output. That forum has now partnered with the United Nations and the World Bank to form another organization called Business as Partners in Development, which exists to push public-private partnerships or government business partnerships on the world as a new form of government at the local level, uh, and which are really a form of capitalism, fascism, socialism, and communism all rolled into one. In other words, the global elite have taken what they think are the best aspects of each system and come up with public-private partnerships. It's Prince Charles' job to push that on the world through the United Nations. And that is exactly what he is doing now. But is he the Antichrist? Now, for some, that may be a stretch or border on conspiracy theory. However, Cohen documents the direct line in his book. Now, here's a longer excerpt from the slideshow where Cohen details his evidence that Prince Charles is indeed the Antichrist of the book of Revelation. Now, please forgive the poor quality as this video was produced in 1999, but it is very relevant today. Watch. My name is Tim Cohen. I'm a Messianic Jew, and I have spent about 12 years at this point researching and writing uh, on Bible prophecy, biblical history, and Christology. And I am the author of this book, The Antichrist and the Cup of Tea. It's a 444-page, heavily documented book, which I am going to share with you tonight. You're going to see that this book is literally the first book in the history of the world to give hard evidence, and by that I mean scripturally testable evidence, to suggest the identity of the Antichrist, and in addition to that, this book documents the structure of the quote-unquote New World Order, uh, and shows that all the key organs of that New World Order sit beneath something called the Order of the Garter today, which itself is built up and has been built up over a period of several centuries beneath the British monarchy. So let's proceed. You'll see on the cover of the Antichrist in the Cup of Tea that I have a coat of arms. I'm going to tell you about that in a moment. It's perhaps the most fascinating coat of arms ever produced. All right. Let me read a passage. Before we start here, you can see this coat of arms in color. The passage is this. It's from Revelation chapter 13. Now the beast which I saw was like a leopard. His feet were like the feet of a bear, and his mouth like the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power, his throne, and great authority. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 666. Notice on this coat of arms, which happens to be the coat of arms of Prince Charles of Wales, that in the place of the normal line of England that we would see on a British royal coat of arms, you have a beast with exaggerated feet like the feet of a bear, body with proportions like the body of a leopard and the mouth of a lion. Notice as well that in the lower right hand compartment there is a red dragon and above that a unicorn that has human eyes. In Daniel chapter 7 in the Old Testament the Antichrist is referred to 
as the little horn with the eyes of a man. And I say the eyes of a man because you'll notice that it has a visible eye white, that the eye socket is not round, and that the eye is not one solid color. I'm going to show you Queen Elizabeth II's coat of arms, the achievement, heraldic achievement of Prince Charles' mother. Notice that on her coat of arms, she has a normal line, not this beast with exaggerated feet or the body of a leopard or the mouth of a lion. This is an actual lion. Additionally, there is no red dragon, and the unicorn has an eye that is round, solid, not a human eye. And I'm going to show that in a, in a blown-up version in a moment to clarify that, because this image is somewhat difficult to see. Again, here is the beast on the left-hand side, or dexter side in the heraldry of Prince Charles' coat of arms, exaggerated feet like the feet of a bear, body like the body of a leopard, mouth like the mouth of a lion. Now, what we have just seen is that Prince Charles of Wales in his personal coat of arms bears the imagery that is prophesied in the book of Daniel as well as in Revelation chapter 13. He has this beast described in Revelation 13. He has the red dragon described in Revelation 12 and 13. The red dragon gives this beast his uh, seat, great authority and power. And then you have the little horn of the eyes of man. In Daniel 7, that little horn of the eyes of man is said to have a body, and he is slain, ultimately, by Christ in context at his return. In other words, he is a unicorn with human eyes. The presence of this imagery should suggest to us that we ought to attempt to perform the name calculation. Again, it says, Now the beast which I saw was like a leopard, his feet were like the feet of a bear, his mouth like the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power, his throne, and great authority. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 666. That suggests very strongly to us that for the first time in history, we can perform the name calculation in its required context. Again, it is said that it is the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. The beast is present in the case of Prince Charles. When we perform the calculation, this is what we get. This system is today called the Kabbalic Numbering System. The reason is that it has been adopted into Kabbalism, which would be the occult version, the Jewish equivalent to Gnosticism. And, uh, however, it is a much more ancient system that, than that. It is the ancient biblical numbering system. Ancient Hebrew did not have its own numbering system. Instead, it used the characters of the Hebrew language to represent numbers. Aleph is one, Bay is two, Gimel is three, Dal is four, etc. This system was used by Israel's ancient rabbis to calculate the values of words and names before Christ came. It was used by the Anti-Nicene Church to calculate the value of words and names in Greek. Notice the Greek alphabet here. It was subsequently incorporated into the Greek language, and although the original system ended at 400 because there were only 22 characters in the Hebrew language, it was ultimately extended to include 500, 600, 700, 800, and 900 in the Greek only. It was applied historically in a sequential fashion to the Greek language, not in a phonetic fashion. Additionally, the number 666 itself was specified in the underlying Greek text, in the received text, the same one on which the authorized King James Version is based, not using Greek words, but rather using three Greek letters. One letter for the number 600, a second letter for the number 60, and a third letter for the number 6. Because it's specified in that fashion, the original Greek text tells us what numbering system we are supposed to use on which to try to perform the name calculation. As it turns out, the title Prince Charles of Wales in both English or Charles Prince of Wales, it does not matter how we order it, and in Hebrew, Nasik Charles of Wales, which is the Hebrew equivalent of the same title, Prince Charles of Wales, and is the way that the name is spelled officially in the modern Israeli press, both calculate to exactly 666. 666 for the English, 666 for the Hebrew. Statistically, on this system, the odds of that occurring are far less than 1 in 10 to the 50th. 
Eros, for example, who is a physicist who is somewhat noted in the Christian community, has stated that in physics, an event that is 1 in 10 to the 50th or rarer in probability virtually cannot happen in nature. It's considered to be so rare. The odds on this system in two languages of one title or name calculating the 666 are far less than 1 in 10 to the 50th. In other words, it cannot happen by chance. In fact, it's virtually an impossibility, yet it is a fact. So now we have the Prince of Wales consolidating corporate power using public-private partnerships, fascism, to combat climate change while demonizing those who would question his leadership by calling it secretly conspiring, but the fact is he's doing it wide in the open on the world stage. So do you believe, Tim Cohen, that Prince Charles could be the Antichrist? For more answers, you can dig deeper into this topic by visiting the vast body of Cohen's work at prophecyhouse.com. You can also secure the second edition of his groundbreaking book, The Antichrist and a Cup of Tea. Now the Lord has commanded us to watch the signs and the seasons for his return. Without a doubt, what we are seeing unfold could be one of the seasons or climate change. Now, nothing is scarier than a crown prince who is deciding to make himself the new lord of war and calling for the consolidation of power through his influence over public-private partnerships. Is this move worthy to be considered of the footsteps of the Antichrist? Only time will tell. Until then, watch. Comment below. We'll see you at the next report. For the next News Network, I'm Gary Franchi. Thank you for watching that report. Now, if you've been keeping up with the news, you might have heard the word tapering being used. It's the new Fed buzzword, and you'll hear all kinds of meanings for it. But what it really means is Washington has to repay around $30 trillion that it borrowed. Now, our friends over at Noble Gold, they can keep you safe and protect you. So keep up with inflation by taking out an IRA with Noble Gold this month. And along with their first class service, they're gifting a one tenth ounce gold bullion American Eagle coin. It's absolutely beautiful. You can see it right here, right on the screen. Look at that thing. It's gorgeous. It's look at that thing. It's beautiful, beautiful. And that can be yours. So visit their website right now at noblegoldinvestments.com or simply give them a call at 877-646-5347. We'll see you at the next report for the next news network. I'm Gary Franchi. You possess the power to impact the global narrative. Please share this report. And to get more videos like this, become an X-News subscriber by clicking the link below. Thank you for watching the next news network.